Well, hello, everybody. Hello, Common Ground. Uh, we have many of our Dharma teachers at Common Ground here to say hello as we are living in our homes these days, uh, offering some love to the world by keeping physical distance, physical distance, physical safe distance. And so we wanted to offer some of our well wishes to you, uh, some of our strength and hope and hopes that it might support you as you are practicing and living your lives. And one of the things um, I noticed, I've been noticing is that this is a time of a lot of emotions flowing through my heart. And so rather than trying to stop them from flowing, honoring that they're there and finding some way to take care of the energy. So for example, um, at times there's agitation or irritation or anger. And so finding ways to allow that to move either with the body and walking or also with sharing ideas, writing letters, um, signing petitions, doing some advocacy from my home that has felt useful to me. I hope it is to you too. Hi, I'm Gail Iverson. I'm a, a teacher and a staff member and a practitioner at Common Ground. And when uh, my first teacher, Shenzhen Young, went on a year long sabbatical in 1991, uh, he sent a message to his students encouraging us to keep practicing. And he ended his message by quoting a motto that was above the entrance to a Japanese monastery where he had practiced. And the motto said, time flies like an arrow. Who knows what co will come tomorrow? Give yourself fully to that which is your true work today. So we've all been experiencing an increased uncertainty regarding the future. And perhaps we can at least at times see our current situation as a gift that's encouraging us to connect more deeply with wisdom and compassion. Hello, Common Ground family. Uh, I'm Stacy McClendon, a practitioner, teacher, and board chair at Common Ground. Uh, hmm. Good to be with you here uh, when we're all so far from one another in many ways. One of the uh, things that's been becoming clear to me over these last several weeks are all of the ways that my mind has these very fixed stories about how things should be, who is responsible, looking for someone to blame. I've been taking this opportunity to investigate those stories, those fixed ideas a bit, and noticing how my mind tends to be inclined toward uh, that criticism, critical nature, and setting the intention in long days, difficult days, stressful days, and there's great uncertainty to notice simple moments of pleasure. I was talking with someone today who said he has been going on longer runs in his neighborhood and for the very first time noticed a bench by the lake in his neighborhood. And it's just an example of how we can get swept away in our minds or in our daily responsibilities and tasks and miss some of the very simple pleasures that are present in our lives. So I hope with this uh, slowing down of your life and there's an opportunity for things to be more simple and clear and see with gratitude the joys. Hi everybody, I'm Mark Nunberg, the guiding teacher at Common Ground. And uh, it occurred to me to share this uh, recent answer that Saida Utejaniya, this Burmese teacher of ours, 
uh, gave when Doug McGill asked him, how do you personal, personally handle anxiety or fear? And he said recently, it's not that I don't have anxiety or fear, but I do have the understanding that this is just what happens in the mind. I cannot prevent the mind from having fear or anxiety. They will arise. But my view is, this is natural for the mind in this situation. The worst thing that we can possibly do is think, how can I get rid of this? Because the desire to not have anything bad happen at all is exactly what causes the worst fear to arise. The mind that doesn't want any sorrow or suffering creates the most anxiety. So I've been working with this personally and, and really teaching from this, this perspective too, that uh, we're in this soup together now. There's so much uncertainty and even just on a, the basic level of change or just our worlds are different than they were even a few weeks ago. And that triggers in probably all of us, of course, in different ways, just a lot of uneasiness and anxiety. And it's easy for controlling types like myself to think, you know, I'm a Buddhist practitioner. I've been at this for a while. I shouldn't, you know, be disoriented. I shouldn't have anxiety. I shouldn't be afraid. I shouldn't be confused. And uh, as I'm sure a lot of you have learned, that doesn't really help. So I'm really trying, trying, doing my best to befriend the different qualities that are showing up in my heart, in my body, in my mind. And, uh, and then related to what uh, Stacy just said, just not being afraid or ashamed to find moments of simple joy, appreciating ordinary space that shows up in my life. Yeah, so I offer this to you. Hope to see you online and wishing you all great safety out there. Hi everyone, my name is Jean Haley. Um, I'm very happy to be able to say a few words. I haven't really planned this out. So what comes to mind is um, a story I heard today. When I go out for walks, I like to listen to stories. And there was a story of a Chinese American woman who um, had never really thought about um, her ethnicity living in this country until she went out a couple of days ago, she lives in New York City, to empty the garbage. And a man came up to her and he was in her face, so to speak, and he was screaming expletives and implying that she was responsible for the virus. And she said for the first time in her life, she felt real panic, she felt terror. And she made it home and she sat with these feelings of terror. And then when she experienced them and let them move through, she, she went a little bit deeper and she thought about what this man may have been experiencing. Perhaps he'd lost his job, maybe he had a family member that was sick or dying. And uh, she realized that um, she didn't really understand the motivation for his response. And she also realized that, that those moments were uh, full of possibility that that was what it meant to be an American, actually, that there was the possibility to meet those moments and to meet them with love, with understanding, and perhaps even to be able to, to um, begin to create some change in her own heart and in this man's heart. And so she, she saw this as an opportunity, as a possibility, for something positive to come out of something that had been so terrifying. So I say this not to minimize what we're all going through, but it reminds me that there is, in the midst of this, great possibility. So I'd like to I'll leave you with a, a little um, aspiration or wish. May you find shelter in the storm. May you have moments of mental and physical ease. And above all, may you meet your suffering 
whether it be anger, impatience, fear, despair, may you meet it with deep self-compassion. Thank you. My name is Mira Young, and I'm one of the um, practitioners and teachers at Common Ground. And I'm honored to be part of this circle and this community. And um, uh, as all of us, this is a time of a lot of rawness and vulnerability, uncertainty. And um, it helps me to remember my own ancestors, um, my people, ancestors who came through the Holocaust. And um, from those ashes, the lotus came from the mud, so to speak. And that I have a a little blessing of compassion for this time and that we have this resiliency this innate resiliency as human beings and that that this the transformation that's possible as we lay bare at this time the i don't even have words for the vastness of the three poisons of greed hatred and delusion of such um, roots of racism and um, injustice, power and privilege, and um, how these, um, these storms, these forces have been so much ruling our world and that this time can maybe, may it be a time to um, plant some new seeds out of this um, time of so much um, pain and suffering. May the suffering, the tears of our humanity, <clears throat> greater than the four oceans, as the Buddha taught, may we have all the courage we need to bear this suffering, to break wide open our hearts, raw and vulnerable in wisdom, compassion, and equanimity, in action for healing of all beings. May we not lose heart as Jack Cornfield says, and may we know that this too shall pass. Hello everyone, my name is Gabe Keller Flores. I'm the office manager at Common Ground and one of our teachers. And um, one thing I was reflecting on before this um, call tonight that's been interesting in my experience and a source of refuge and um, deepening um, has been one way I thought of expressing it is the, the name of John Kabat-Zinn's book, um, Wherever You Go, There You Are. Um, but then I was thinking what I really wanted to express wasn't so much that in that in the sense that wherever I go, Gabe is there, but more like wherever, whatever moment is showing up, whatever is showing up, what is, what else is always there? Um, what is with us all the time, no matter what is going on, no matter what we're experiencing, uh, no matter whether we feel confused, feel overwhelmed even in times, or just off, just numb, all the different experiences we might be having, or, or joy, or really a lot of peace. I've experienced all these things in the last month. And, uh, and actually, in, in some ways, just the contrast between these different states seems more pronounced right now um, and but also this connection to like where is our ground with so much uncertainty and uh, and that awareness that knows that can connect this is the way it is now this is how it feels this is my reaction there's something about these times that at least for me personally has sort of been inviting that interest in the present moment, um, 
in the space of awareness that holds everything. It might be because the conditioned mind doesn't really know what to make of it. So there's not a lot of ground there for me, but the space that knows, that can feel just the sensitive heart, there's a lot of room there. And it, um, it, it's the one thing that's sort of been feeling trustworthy in these times. Um, so for whatever that's worth, um, I offer those reflections. And, and there's also a sense of presence there that um, in these times where we can feel disconnected, um, I offer that to you that wherever you are, uh, I'm there. <laughs> We're all here together going through this. So may you be well. Hello, everyone. Common Ground community. I don't know if you remember me. This is Niels Heyman from San Francisco. I love Common Ground. This is the time to take our toolbox out of our Dharma hearts and, uh, and put our practice into practice and to be gentle with ourselves and with everyone else. I wish you well in this time. Hi, everyone. My name is Kyoko Katayama, and I'm sending my message from Tucson, Arizona, where I'm sequestered because it's not safe or wise to drive a long distance home to Minnesota. So in this warmer desert climate, I have a privilege to be outside to watch the sky for the sunrise every morning. And this morning, uh, some clouds were dark and gray and others were pink and golden touched by the light of the invisible sun. The infinite sky held all of them, the heavy gray ones and the golden ones. We experienced 10,000 sorrows and 10,000 joys inside of us and around us. And in this time of the pandemic, the sorrows and fears are intensified, and so could the joys and the sense of connection to one another. To hold them all, we support our heart's capacity to open wide and, and nimble. The heart knows how to be tender in the face of vulnerability to be fierce with courage to heal the pain of, of hardship in us and around us. So let's take good care of our heart. The sorrows pierce our heart, but that's how the heart grows, breaking the outer shell no longer needed, like a husk of a seed cracking open for the sprout to emerge. It does take courage to bear witness to the cracking, the initial pain and the discomfort to let in the truth of the way things are. But it's life emerging again and again. So do things that make you feel alive and be intimate with your experience. And remember with tenderness, not only your heart, but that of others. We are in this together. So I want to share the teaching from the sky this morning. I get these teachings often from the sky. It reminded me that uh, practice is not only to hold and bear witness to the vicissitude of our experiences with awareness and love, but also to remember and to trust that we are held by something vast, 
like the sky holding all the passing cloud. So that's my offering to you. May you be well. May you be safe. Greetings, dear Dharma friends. Um, I'm Patrice Kelch, and it has been such um, a pleasure to practice together these weeks when we've all been separate, when we've all been physically separate. And I have just had such a, a sense of our community, our beloved community, coming together and supporting each other listening to the live streams and the Zooms and, um, and then the larger uh, Dharma community. I've just been so moved by the generosity of so many teachers um, throughout the country who have been available online. And I just have such a a felt sense of connection and it's ironic since we've all been so physically separated at this time. I thought I might share with you some of the things that have been helpful to me in a really uh, practical way and um, one has been early on really helped me to reframe my uh, situation which was to be reminded that um, Anne Frank hid in the attic for 761 days. Three children, three young adults, adolescents, and um, four adults. They could never go out. They could never make noise. And they lived under um, you know, peril of their lives. And when they were finally discovered after those 761 days, only one survived, Otto Frank. So it just um, really was helpful for me to have that as a frame and to remember that people have often been called to, um, to live nobly under difficult circumstances. And I think about this partly because I offer meditation at a maximum security correctional facility where part of what we talk about sometimes is how to live nobly under really difficult circumstances when small acts of generosity and kindness are often magnified. And um, I don't get credit for thinking about this, but I read somewhere uh, in the past couple of weeks that so often we've been focused on, you know, use this time well, be productive, learn to play the piano, you know, write that novel or make it a retreat and all this sort of emphasis on, on productivity, which really is all about the self. And um, I read a suggestion that um, what if we were to make it our task for the day to do something that was really kind and generous, which can be a challenge when we're just um, by ourselves or with our family. But I just love that reframing of what's the most creative or doesn't have to be the most creative but what would be a creative or kindly thing to do um, today and that that would should be uh, my focus instead of my productivity in some way and finally the other thing that really helps me is just to remember my intention remember my aspiration and what i have used for years and years and what seems to be really helpful to me in this time is, are the two phrases, may wisdom and compassion protect me. May I be free from the suffering caused by fear, by anger, and ill will. May wisdom and compassion protect me. And may I be free from the suffering caused by fear, anger, and ill will. So I offer that to you, my very dear friends, and wish us all um, strength, solidarity, and um, the deepest kind of um, wellness in these days. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Wynne Fricke, and I'm a teacher and a co-founder of Common Ground. And um, uh, Mark and I have been taking walks just about every day. and 
um, I'm just aware of how quiet uh, the streets are, how um, there are more voices coming from people than there are sounds from cars and the lack of planes. So in a certain way, there's such a beautiful, uh, peaceful settledness. Um, and then in another moment, I'll feel how eerie that is too, with all the, the experiences that I can't see that are happening in people's homes and in hospitals with people suffering. And so also what those em empty streets are, are saying, what that quietude is saying. Um, the other night I was listening to a short talk by Gil Fransdahl and um, he shared a, a, just a short statement. I think it's kind of a poem. Uh, um, and it offered a, a powerful um, and different perspective on these empty streets. And I wanted to share that with you. Gil wasn't sure who wrote it. He had an idea. It might be someone called Paul Williams, but I Googled it. And apparently it's Bill Gates, so we'll find out <laughs> eventually, but maybe it's meant for all of us. And this is what it says. Um, <clears throat> when you go out and see the empty streets, the empty stadiums, the empty train platforms, don't say to yourself, it looks like the end of the world. What you are seeing is love in action. What you are seeing in that negative space is how much we do care for each other, for our grandparents, for our immune compromised brothers and sisters, for people we will never meet. People will lose their jobs over this. Some will lose their businesses and some will lose their lives. All the more reason to take a moment when you are out on your walk and on your way to the store or just watching the news to look into the emptiness and marvel at all that love let it fill you and sustain you. It isn't the end of the world. It is the most remarkable act of global solidarity we may ever witness. So that's our combined sharing. Oh. Let's take a moment together with you who's ever watching to share the merit of our practice. We can connect with our hearts, just feeling the, feeling the heart and it's remarkable ability to care and to feel kindness and concern and to radiate that out. So we can hold all people who are suffering now all people who are stressed and afraid. And let our hearts radiate out to meet them. and make sure that heart is holding ourselves as well. So, so happy to be able to connect with all of you in this small way and be well.